In Reality, Part 2, Further Theories, Part 2a, Toroidal Tachyonic Thoughts. As has been demonstrated, the soul is a torus. It has an exterior aspect called an acacia aura and an interior aspect the seven chakra twists in the kundalini spiral. The interior aspect and exterior aspect have the same volume, and thus are one and the same, a single energy field over time, such that they continually exchange places, and as one are a symbol for time, entropy, and the passage of mortal flesh into death and decay. The soul is a hologram around the body, like the multiverse of parallel dimensions is to the material cosmos. The effect of both the mind within body, within the soul, and the cosmos, inside the multiverse, inside the mind of God, both being holographic hyperspheres independently, is that together they combine to form the manifold scale levels of the cosmos, such that all are interchangeable. This means that all levels connect directly without having to pass through the others. The result of this effect is the passage of time from one moment to the next on all levels of scale, but each size on the scale at its own rate. Time passes more rapidly the smaller in physical scale one descends, and less so the larger. However, from one moment to the next, all things change over time. The past is the father and mother of the present, and the present is the father and mother of the future. Because the aura is the exterior of the soul, which the mind is the interior, and this shape is a torus or hypersphere, and because the shape of the cosmos itself forms a hypersphere whose interior sphere is any one soul, we can say the mind and soul are ubiquitous at their greatest extent with the cosmos, as a map exactly overlapping its terrain, but that at all lesser levels than the entirety of space-time, this holographic hypersphere descends downward in scale causing entropic gravity to pull the matter energy of the cosmos through pinholes in the fabric of the continuum called black holes, which are simply the smallest and oldest form of matter energy particle wave. However, there is one size smaller than a black hole singularity, and thus only this form of light can escape one. This is the tachyon, which is also shaped like a torus, because the tachyon and the soul are both torus-shaped, they and the cosmos itself form a holographic hypersphere, such that tachyons permeate the entire cosmos, causing entropic gravity, which in turn is experienced by the soul as emotions, thoughts, and ideas. Thus, what we see when we look at this rendition by Aleister Crowley of the usual circle of twelve zodiac signs is the cross-section of a torus, or, expressed more simply, one half of a torus seen from the side. Here we see that, just as the diagonal bisecting a 3D cube is the square root of 3, and the diagonal across a 2D square is the square root of 2, half of a 3D sphere will appear from the side as a 2D circle, while half of a 4D hypersphere is this shape, a flattened 4D torus seen from the side. If we follow the direction of the zodiac signs labeled by the Roman numerals around the circular orbit seen from the side as the cross-section of a torus, we will be tracing out a unilinear vector around the surface of the torus, which forms the edge dividing the two halves of a hypersphere into the 4D torus seen from the side. This shape shows us the form of the torus, the tachyon, the cosmos, the soul, the mind, and the multiverse. When we apply the form of the torus 
to understanding the level of the mind, we find it can extend across a total of ten potential dimensions as such. 1. The 1D point. 2. The circular flat 2D plane. 3. The 3D sphere. 4. The 4D hypersphere. 5. The 5D torus of a hypersphere. 6. A hypersphere inside the cross section of the 5D torus of a 4D hypersphere over a 3D sphere above and below a 2D circle around and about a 1D origin point. 7. A sphere inside this second exterior hypersphere. 8. A circle of this second sphere. 9. An origin point inside this other circle. And 10. The point of view of someone observing this entire model from outside of it. In applying this 10D model of the mind to a torus form, we may label each size level on its multiple scales, and by doing so, may arrive at the following set of conclusions. The first dimension, the origin point. When we magnify the origin point of such a structure to its utmost, we find it expressing a holographic reflection of all the other levels within itself. This multi-layered pluralism can best be symbolized as two intersecting 3D tetrahedrons forming a 4D hypertetrahedron or stalactahedron. The stalactahedron represents the combination of polar opposites into one single form. In the case of the 10D model of the mind, we find these dual poles correspond to fact and fiction, otherwise called truth and lies. Although there are degrees combining lies or fiction with facts, there is only one truth, the whole truth comprised of all facts, and not diluted at all by lies or fiction. The exact opposite of this one truth, then, is thus the one greatest lie ever told, the ultimate fiction. One symbolizes God exterior to oneself, the other as interior. The second dimension, the flat circular plane. This is the reflecting pool of the layers above that has as its particulate water drops the quanta or information units symbolized by the stalactahedron. As the number of these quanta asymptotically approaches infinite via the conversion of matter into energy over time, that results from particles gradually breaking apart from a mass and forming free radicals or randomly patterned energy loss as heat, the mind expands. Therefore, it is because thoughts are tachyons, and because tachyons are smaller than black hole singularities, and because black holes pull all matter energy and space-time toward them. Thus, as the space between black holes contracts, the space measured by the mind as tachyon thoughts expands. The third dimension, the round orb or sphere. Symbolic of the mind itself in this ten-dimensional model, this is the largest level of real consciousness. On the surface of the sphere, infinite thoughts appear as a tessellated pattern across its face, such that the closer the surface of the sphere is to the observer, the larger the tessellated shape will appear, and the further the distance of the surface of the sphere from the observer, the smaller the tessellated shapes will appear, with the single thought occupying the center of the sphere of the mind under observation, and with all other of infinite thoughts tapering out to self-terminating finitude around the outer edge. The fourth dimension, the hypersphere over time. The hypersphere in the ten-dimensional model of potential awareness symbolizes the mind over time. Animals and humans both exhibit the capacity for thought, however what differentiates self-aware humans from less self-aware animals is that humankind can focus on and derive inspiration from the knowledge of our own mortality and inevitable bodily death, 
while animals do not comprehend that their life will one day end. This results because the animal's attention span is short and it takes less time for it to become distracted by material reality, while the human self-concept has, at its deepest core, the idea that one day the mind might cease to think, the body cease to be, and the ego's self cease to exist. It is fear of losing life that motivates our species, far beyond those of the rest of the animals, to cultivate cultural beliefs and to leave our physical mark on historical spans of time. This is the level of the survival instinct, said to be the prime motive for all living behavior. The fifth dimension, the tachyon torus of the mind over time. Because the tachyon is the smallest scale quantum or information unit of particle wave in the matter-energy-space-time continuum of our local universe, and because the mind serves as a large version of this same form, the torus, formed as an aggregate of tachyons like a hologram of a gnomon, rather like a hollow gnomon, the tachyon and the mind forms are interchangeable over time. Thus, the torus of the mind is a single holographic tachyon, and the torus of a single tachyon expands to become the torus of the mind not by growing larger, but by becoming more complex across its surface. So, too, is true of the singularity of our own local universe, which expands from the Big Bang outward toward critical mass, at which point it begins consuming itself until at some point in this grand cycle roughly opposite our own current cosmos, the multiverse formed of antimatter and dark energy inverted from our own continuum's matter energy being pulled through the veil of space-time into the realm of time-space beyond, completely evaporates into a zero-energy, zero-time nulliverse, where nothingness non-exists eternally. The Sixth Dimension the hypersphere of another's mind, exterior to our own. As I have demonstrated in another lecture, on ESP, telepathy can work in one of three ways, or else not work at all. One is one-way telepathy from a source to a subject, as in direct and unaware mind control. Two, one-way telepathy from a subject to a source, as in indirect and aware mind reading, or three, in an equal both-way psychic rapport, two equal minds can form a permanent bond and become soulmates. However, ESP or telepathy of these forms is only one kind of mind over matter, in those cases of one person's mind over the gray matter of another person's brain. However, one's mind can also be applied telekinetically over non-living matter as well. When this is practiced, one can learn to project gravity. However, mastering this practice is very hard because it is not a matter of mental strength, but of expanding in one's mind's eye a mental projection from the size of tachyons on which scale our minds and subspace matter share a common field or continuum and which allow us to influence quanta unconsciously all the time in the form of our free will. Into real energy wavelengths, the same frequency as the circumference of the object's particles. The seventh dimension. The five senses of two, combining as a sixth sense for both. One sphere of the mind reflects, as the primary thought on its surface, the sphere of the mind of another, like looking at your reflection in another person's eye, or like a two-way mirror, and this causes a feedback loop to occur between the two people's souls. When this happens, we shift our perceptual attention span out of focus while looking at somebody else's eyes, such that they seem to shift and appear to combine between them as a third eye, the ajna. This ajna 
because it is an optical illusion seen on someone else's face only because we are crossing our eyes while looking at them, exists in symbolic space between reality and the pure truth of the mind. This is the realm of fiction or lies that combines reality below with truth above in the form of interspersed facts in a novel narrative format. The Eighth Dimension one's own perception of the soul of another being. The conservation of angular momentum, effect of point vector motion on a spherical surface that causes particles of matter to asymptotically break apart into free radical wavelengths of energy, is slightly slowed when it experiences friction against counterspin of these particles in the form of conservation of dimension, such as the conservation on a spherical surface to movement only in three dimensions, the six sum coordinate pairs of equatorial latitudinal, polar longitudinal, and rotational orbital. The combination of angular momentum by dimension and of dimension by angular momentum results in solid particles of all various size scales rotating at all the different frequencies of wavelengths measurable within the cosmos over all time. In short, that which we perceive to exist appears to do so as objects of various volume in different locations in space that can change over time in shape and location when in truth all we are truly sensing is a flattened reflection of the world outside of it on the inside surface of our womb-like aura. We are brains in jars, in essence. The Ninth Dimension Self-awareness in one is the spirit in another. The self-awareness in itself of each of us is the same in every other one of us as well. It is how we experience this self-awareness that differs. We are just leaves on the tree of life, while the mind of God moves through us invisibly like the wind. Lines of thought, single-point ideas, and wave fields of emotion comprise the edges, corners, and sides of the massive metaforms or hypershapes in four dimensions which pass through us invisibly in the form of changes over time, both entropic and negantropic, both fractal and gnomon, both inanimate and living. Thus, when one mind reads another, which is also reading it, and an infinitely repeating impossible feedback loop of mental energy is formed between two separate people, as in an epiche or epitome on the existence of nothingness, then it is considered the mind of the cosmos reading itself, God conversing with himself through us, and thus both minds dissolve into one circuit, and this forms a hologram reflecting the macrocosmic metaphor mind of God. The ego dissolves into oneness with the primary clear light. The tenth dimension, not depicted, expressed as the observer seeing this model. In the order of the division of the elementary forces from one another at one Planck time following the Big Bang superheated metastasis expansion of the singularity at the original moment of coming into being of our current cosmos. Gravity formed first, followed by electromagnetism, followed by weak nuclear fission, followed lastly by strong nuclear fusion. This mirrors the descent from a pure dimensional zero time, zero energy nulliverse toward the singularity of the Big Bang. First in the Nulliverse was the pure dimension of time. 
from this fell down one size scale a measure of depth or volume following at a right angle from this formed an extension of height or area from this extension to connect with volume next emitted at a right angle from both the 180 degree opposite directions co-measuring the dimensional singularity point as a distance over duration of motion in space-time called length or origin. Thus time equals gravity, electromagnetism equals volume, fission equals area, and fusion equals origin. These are then called in shorthand by their terrestrial elemental counterparts, respectively water, air, fire, and earth. These are equivalent to the four worlds of Kabbalah, accessible as mind states. This describes the physics of the world beyond the 10D model in which you, the viewer, exists, thinks, and lives. So we see how a toroid, hypersphere, or sphere within a sphere, the same is used as the basis of the 10D model of consciousness, with only four levels, also expresses the same form of levels as we saw occurring for the mind, occurring here to reflect levels of the material physical cosmos. Outside of time space is the one eternal spirit, which permeates throughout all levels to reform in the core world as a single soul within each quantum being. Surrounding this core is each being's unique and singular physically biological body. Outside of and around this, surrounding it in the realm beyond, are the many bodies of other beings, comprised of other forms of quanta, as well as those alike those of our own ego's self-definition. Within each of these is also a soul, and thus so there are as many souls as there have ever been, are now, or ever will be, quantum beings capable of embodying them, or rather, immortal energy fields which can exist until the end of the multiverse's evaporation into the nulliverse. These are adjacent at their outermost side, facing away from one's own central core, single soul, to the origin of our own single soul, that being the eternal, single spirit, beyond all time-space. This model also represents the four worlds of Kabbalah. These are now, in descending order from the outermost and closest to the Godhead, Atsaluth, equivalent to the realm of time and of the mind over time, Yetzira, equivalent to the realm of depth in space and to the conscious mind, Bariah, equivalent to the realm of width in space and thoughts on the mind. And finally, the core realm of Asaya, that is equivalent to the length of a point in space and an idea in the mind. Here we see the four worlds of Kabbalah expressed as ascending outward from our own single soul in the innermost core realm of Asaya toward beyond the bright limitless nothingness in the realm of Atsaluth. We see thus how the four worlds of Kabbalah relate to the formation of the four elemental forces which we see as originating in the furthest reaches from our own point of view as gravity, water, followed by electromagnetism, air, followed by fission, fire, followed by fusion, earth, However, as I said, this is the relationship of these elements to one another from the point of view of the observer at the core of their own single soul, within their body, looking out through their eyes, etc. But if we look at the same relationship of elements from the point of view of an observer whose orientation is from the origin of the mental emanations that coagulated into the material elements, the same array appears reversed. Here we see that the Big Bang signifies God, gravity, adsaluth, electromagnetism, etc., 
Fission, Bariah, and Fusion, Aziah, wherein we live on the exterior most of this core sample, on the uppermost arc labeled Critical Mass of the Space-Time Continuum.